So thanks for tuning in everybody. This is a video of me charming a gypsy vanner. And this horse gets pretty regular trims these days. His feet have improved tremendously um, over the last couple of years. So right now I'm cleaning up his, uh, his frog with my knife. And there's a lot of uh, different trim methods out there that tell you you should do different things. And I've heard of some that say you should never touch the frog. And if I never trim this frog, it would be an absolute disaster. You can see I actually found a little pocket of gunk near you know, the central sulcus. So I'm opening that up a little bit and probing it to kind of see if it's deep or not. Because if it's deep, I'm going to want to open it up further. But it wasn't. It was pretty shallow. So I just removed any dead tissue that was next to that opening and then left it alone because the rest of the frog was in pretty good shape. Now I'm trimming the bars. His bars like to migrate down around by the apex of the frog. So I always trim those back pretty good. Now I'm removing some of the wall at the heel down through the quarters. And this horse, I think he's on a six week schedule right now. So for that length of time in the winter, he's grown a tremendous amount of hoof. And I'm grabbing my rasp because the toe is not as long as the heels or the quarters. So didn't feel like I needed my nippers. It felt like my rasp would be the right tool for the job. Smoothing everything out and kind of getting it the height that I want it to be at. And after I finish rasping, you can see that the wall at the toe is actually a lot thicker than the hoof wall anywhere else on the foot. So I'm doing a vertical nip to remove some of that excess material. And then finishing up with my bevel from the bottom of the foot. And I do a lot of balancing from the bottom and from the top. So my trim is not finished when I set the foot down the first time. It's just finished on the bottom. Make sure that heel area is smooth because that's a harder place to get from the top. Removing any sharp edges off those heels. Okay, moving on to the left hind. Kind of tucking those feathers in so that I can see the foot a little bit better. I'm digging out all the mud and muck that's stuck in there. And the first structure I usually like to address on these draft type hooves is the frog. Because the height of the frog will dictate uh, how far I can take my heels down. Because I don't want the frog to be sitting proud, which means that the height of the frog would be sitting up higher than the height of the hoof wall. So now I'm addressing his bars, which usually like to migrate down the hoof and, and try to kind of wrap their way around the apex of the frog. I like to clean those up and take them down to the plane of the sole if possible. And now that I've addressed those two areas of the hoof, I can do some rasping and some nipping if the hoof re requires it. When I first started trimming this guy, uh, he actually would break off the wall in his quarters before I ever would have a chance to trim it. And his feet were kind of like an arrowhead shape. So they've improved a lot over the last few years. Now they're much more balanced and wear a lot more evenly. But the owner has also started feeding a, a real high quality hoof supplement that has a pretty good balanced vitamins and minerals in a chelated form that are easy for the horse to absorb. And since she's been feeding those, this horse has been growing a much healthier foot. So it's not all the trim. I'd like to take credit for it, but it's not. Okay. Further balancing this foot, taking down the walls while I'm starting my bevel at the same time and now smoothing the edge of that bevel especially through the heel area because that is the hardest part to get smooth um, when I finish trimming a hoof from the top. Now I've picked up this horse's right hind and with uh, my knife that actually has a pick on the other side just cleaning out some of that mud and manure 
once again, addressing the frog first and establishing the height of that structure before I move on to any others because the height of that structure will dictate where I can trim everything else to. Back to the bars. This bar is a little bit more laid over on the sole. Oh, guess he needed his foot back for a second. And I'm pretty sure we actually had to move him around a little bit <laughs> before I picked it up again. But he, he's a good boy. This horse, he knows the drill. We're just cleaning up those bars a little bit more. Time to rasp my heels down now that the bars and the frog have been addressed. And this fits a slightly odd shape. You can see on that lateral side, which is the outside of the horse, horse's hoof, um, it kind of indents a little bit. And so some of that is actually flare. And on this horse, I don't usually address too much flare from the bottom. If I remove it, it's from the top. But these big heavy horses, uh, they like to flare through the quarters quite a bit. And you can actually see where that bulge is on the lateral side. That frog is curled in the same arc as the bulge that is in the quarter. So what kind of happens is when these big heavy horses are, have their hooves loaded, that bar when it gets long will start to lay over. And as that bar starts to lay over, it will push on that quarter and it will flare in that area. So what actually causes the flare is the bar. Well, what actually causes the flare in the bar is the weight of the horse. All right, done with that one. So now I'm working on this horse's right front. Actually got my hoof pick out for this one. Always seem to forget I have that in my in the pockets of my chaps and I seem to go for my knife first. I get a little ahead of myself because I know I'm going to use that knife to trim the frog. So usually that's where my hand goes first, even though it's probably better if I just use that hoof pick that I just had in my hand. So here I got the knife now. And you can kind of see there's kind of a pocket of yuck in that frog. And this is a huge reason as to why I trim drafty types frogs too, because you will find hidden pockets of necrotic material within them. So I like to explore them and explore the central sulcus and remove anything that looks like it could be harboring uh, fungus or bacteria. So see, I was use a smaller knife now to remove those little pockets because I'd already moved the, bu the bulk of the material. So this frog needed a lot more cleanup than the other three that I've already worked on. But same thing on this front as on the other three hooves. Uh, lots of bar to remove. If I left that there, it would cause flaring for sure. And you can see he actually started to self-trim uh, through the medial toe quarter on this hoof. And there's a piece that's broken off in that area. So rasping his heels down, making them smooth after nipping them. You'll start to be able to see what the whole perimeter of the hoof wall looks like. In that area, see where that, that toe was quite a bit thicker than the other areas of the wall. So I'm doing a vertical nip right there, but tilting my nippers a little bit at the same time. So I'm removing material, but also creating my bevel at the same time. And now that I've taken the wall down, I can see that the bars have a couple little high spots back in the seat of the corn where they form that triangle. All right. Now I'm going to finish balancing and beveling all my hooves from the top. And you can see that this breed of horse actually has quite a lot of hair that hangs over the top of their hooves. We call those feathers. And what's really awesome is that this horse's owner actually trims up and removes those feathers so that I can see the hoof wall a lot easier when I'm trimming him. But it's been a while since he's had his last little haircut. So it's a little bit more difficult to see this time. So I'm kind of pulling up the hair, having a look at the wall, and then also feeling the hairline with my hand that's holding the hair to kind of get an idea of where and how I want to rasp this horse's hoof from the top. 
So same thing on this front. See, I'm pulling up the hair. I'm also feeling what the hairline feels like. Are there any straight spots? Are there any areas that are more curved and round than others? Because all that information will help me decide where and how much to bevel from the top on this hoof wall. And I think, like I said, when I was trimming one of the other hooves from the bottom, I mostly addressed this horse's flares through the quarters from the top. As I'm doing right there, that's what I'm doing. Kind of just putting a heavy bevel in that area so that it hopefully doesn't crack or break off between now and the next time I'm out to trim. So once again, that's a lateral flare. That's the part I'm, I'm trimming first. Trying to rasp it off and make it smooth and remove any excess material that I don't want to be there anymore. Lifting up the hair, feeling the hairline, looking at the quality of the wall. Just a lot of small little pieces of information that you don't necessarily get when you only look at the bottom of the hoof. So I like to balance from the bottom and then again from the top. Lots of hair on these horses. They're beautiful, but yeah, a lot of hair to take care of and manage. For some horses that have more hair than even this guy has, I'll take bell boots and turn them upside down uh, to kind of hold the hair up a little bit out of the way so that I can see the wall. But his is not nearly as long as those other horses, uh, other gypsies that I have on my books that I trim, so it's a lot easier for me to see by just pulling the hair up. All right, this is something that I don't get to show in every video because uh, most of the horses that I'm trimming are light duty breeds and this horse is actually a gypsy banner which is technically a small draft breed and with these draft type horses they grow a lot of hoof and a lot of hair which means they also grow these big huge chestnuts and ergots so right now this structure that it's underneath the horse's pastern but a level up above the hoof is called an ergot and it's a prehensile structure that kind of grows like a dew claw on dogs. And it, it grows just as fast as the hoof wall and it's kind of like a similar horny material. So every time after I'm done trimming this horse's hoof, I will check his chestnuts and his ergots and if they're long, I'll re I will remove them with my nippers. So the owner is kindly holding his hair back so I can see and remove all the little finger-like projections um, you can see this ergot that I'm working on right now is kind of like separated. It's not one solid piece and it's split off into these four like finger-like projections that are curling back towards the horse's leg. So I, she's holding the hair back and I'm nipping off all the ones I can see. So this is a chestnut. It's on the inside of the hock. On the front legs of the horse, it's on the inside of the knee. And once again, it's on this horse, it's not one solid structure. All these little pieces curling and growing in different directions. So I'm just carefully removing all of them and being mindful not to get too close to the skin um, because if you get in too close you can you can cut too deep and you can make the horse bleed. So yeah very interesting structure. Some people believe that the chestnuts are kind of like whiskers on a cat that kind of help them see in the dark so if a horse is walking through tall grass they think that these structures help them gauge some of the debris they're walking through I don't know I don't know if there's much truth to that I just know that I trim them this one's super cool and interesting really spread out and separated so satisfying to trim but that's about it for this video today folks Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to leave me some comments about what you liked and what you didn't like. And I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, I love that. So satisfying to trim.